Good morning. Let us now complete our discussion of uh, the last uh, playwright for this course, which is uh, who is called Badal Sarkar, a uh, very important playwright from uh, from Bengal, uh, born in 1925 and died in 2011. And uh, he is another very important playwright who uh, wanted to make theatre a medium of uh, social and political change and transformation. He was uh, born uh, to a Christian family and he got a very colonial education. He studied in a Bengali medium school uh, at uh, the Scottish Church College at School. He read lots of Bengali playwrights as a young man and he also wrote his own plays and then became an engineer. Uh, he joined the Communist Party of India and he was deeply affected by the political events of the Second World War in his time. Um, but uh, and also his his loyalty, his relationship with the Communist Party also went, underwent many uh, changes and transformations. Uh, his loyalty to the Communist Party was not unquestioned uh, because uh, he also questioned, of course, for example, the Communist Party's support for the Congress government, uh, the Nehru government in the wake of independence. He later left the party after he lost faith in politics. And then he studied later on to become a town planner and left the party to lead an academic life of his own and also to support the family. He realized that being a member of the Communist Party of India uh, may not actually uh, give him a regular and secure source of uh, livelihood or uh, be a secure, a secure source of money and uh, livelihood. And so he, uh, he went on to pursue his own academic life. He initially worked as a town planner, as an engineer. He joined the Damodar Valley Corporation. Then later on, he went to pursue a diploma in town planning in London, which is where he was first exposed to the finest uh, theater from Europe and America. And then he also spent much of his time later on in Nigeria, uh, where his professional career blossomed along with his career as a playwright, where he wrote most of his uh, best plays in, uh, during his time in Nigeria. And it's also there in his experiences of Nigeria where he also uh, discovers the very intimate connection between the rural and the urban uh, world of Nigeria, uh, something which he then later on tried to uh, do in his, uh, during his stay in Calcutta. Uh, he formed his own theatre group called uh, Shatabdi, which only lasted for two years because of for want of good plays and actors, uh, who, many of whom left to act with other uh, theatre groups. Uh, he is most known for his play Ebong Indrajit. नाम बताओ 
बेवकूफ बन गया तुम बताओ ना सर मेरा नाम निर्मल कुमार है तो मैं जानना चाहता हूँ लोग तुम्हें किस नाम से बुलाते हैं तुम्हारा असली नाम क्या है क्या तुम सच में निर्मल हो नहीं तो फिर तुम्हारा असली नाम क्या है इंद्रजीत राय फिर तुमने निर्मल क्यों बताया डर लगा डर इस बात का नियम तोड़ देने का जब आप कोई नियम तोड़ते हैं तो आपके आसपास अशांति पैदा हो जाती इससे पहले भी आप अपने आप को निर्मल बताते थे नहीं आज पहली बार बताया ऐसा क्यों अब उम्र हो चुकी उम्र हो जाने पर आनंद और सुख से डर लगने लगता है अब सिर्फ शांति की जरूरत है वैसे क्या उम्र है अब आपकी बर्थ सर्टिफिकेट के हिसाब से तो पैंतीस साल और आपका जन्म स्थान दिल्ली पढ़ाई लिखाई दिल्ली में शादी दिल्ली की जॉब दिल्ली और मृत्यु अभी होनी बाकी पक्का पता नहीं चलो जाके दुकान साफ करो किसने बोला तुम्हें आकर के बात करें अरे यार तुम्हें बोला था मैंने मट्टी नहीं लेकर आ तो मट्टी भी नहीं लेकर आ यार क्या बदलने के नौकर मैंने अपने जीवन में बहुत सारे नाटक लिखे हैं मगर मैं अभी भी बहुत सारा लिखना चाहता हूँ दिक्कत की बात यह है कि अब मेरे पास कंटेंट की कमी है क्योंकि मैं आम साधारण जनता की पीड़ा को नहीं समझता खेतों में काम करने वाले किसानों से मेरा कोई परिचय नहीं है संताल मचू वाले साफ खोलने वाले रेड़ी वाले इनसे तो मेरा कोई वास्ता नहीं वैसे आप लोग ही बताइए एक अच्छा नाटक लिखने के लिए क्या जरूरी है एक अच्छी कहानी और कुछ दिलचस्प किरदार मगर कहानी और किरदार मिलना कोई आसान बात नहीं है क्योंकि अगर आप इन्हें ढूंढे भी तो कहा मैं तो अपने आसपास जिन लोगों को देखता हूँ असल में उनके जीवन में ना तो कोई रंग है ना ही कोई रूप है ना ही कोई वस्तु ये लोग एकदम अनाट के लोग हैं ये है अमल विमल कमल एवं इंद्र जी सर आपकी चाय Uh, but um, sarkar's plays uh, represent uh, largely the anxieties of an urban man right so uh, even though uh, uh, initially uh, you know uh, bal sarkar uh, made use of uh, certain western uh, uh, technologies of drama and theater uh, certain western dramatic dramaturgical devices uh, like the proscenium arch and the backdrop and lighting and so on uh, he gradually uh, left the uh, proscenium stage behind to uh, create something called the uh, angan manch or which is literally translated as the theater in the round right so these were largely uh, you know raised circular uh, uh, stages that were uh, that were surrounded by the audience right so the uh, so the actor could see as many people in front of him as uh, as they were behind him so there was never a there was never a uh, the actor never faced the audience and he he did not have a flat uh, backdrop at the end uh, behind him so it wasn't uh, it was a circular setting which uh, exposed him to uh, the audience uh, all around so uh, he gradually of course um, abandoned the proscenium stage and then he began to produce open air performances that were more intimate in the interactions with the audience and he also tried to partly replace uh, conventional characters and themes with groups so he ha- he would have groups of actors who were on stage who would uh, who would uh, engage in uh, a direct communication what he called direct communication with the audience he also made use of uh, poetry uh, and uh, dance uh, in uh, his theater which uh, as uh, the theater scholar uh, of bal sarkar uh, manujendra kundu his book uh, is uh, what i rely on his book on uh, bal sarkar which is called so near yet so far Badal Sarkar's third theater published by Oxford University Press in uh, 2016 is a very revealing uh, insightful study of Badal Sarkar's theater and his relationship with theater and his idea of the form and function of theater where uh, uh, Kundu argues that um, uh, that um, Badal Sarkar uh, sp- his plays were largely reflective of the urban anxiety anxieties of an urban man so uh, i don't think uh, as kundu says sarkar wasn't didn't have any pretensions of uh, you know actually consciously adopting folk forms folk theater traditions like jatra into his plays uh, because uh, 
you know, uh, just the introduction of poetry and dance uh, in his uh, or just performance of any kind, any kind of movement in his play did not uh, imply his knowledge or his direct ex experience of these folk forms. Uh, as uh, many other scholars of theatre, including Anandalal and uh, Shibaji Bondupadi, have argued that uh, Rabindranath Tagore had already experimented with uh, this kind of th theatre earlier. So, uh, Bal Sarkar was by no means the first person to try and incorporate some of these elements of um, uh, non Western theatre into his uh, plays. Right? So, uh, it's true, of course, that Sarkar wanted to challenge the divide between the rural and the urban uh, because he did, but he largely did perform plays that uh, were reflective of the anxieties of the urban world to a largely urban audience or even a working class audience in a language which was accessible to everyone. He also wanted to make theater of a very affordable, uh, if not free event. So he would uh, encourage uh, people to, uh, you know, um, uh, donate uh, money uh, for the performance if they wish to, but it was not compulsory. So his uh, primary uh, concern was to use theater as a medium of social and political change. And he wanted to actually address contemporary social and political issues uh, that were, uh, you know, contemporary uh, to him, to his times, uh, including, you know, many issues of corruption, political corruption, of nuclear war, of, uh, you know, social issues of marriage and dowry and so on and so forth. Um, he also emphasized, you know, particular skill and technique of acting. Uh, and uh, he uh, basically wanted to uh, ensure that theatre was a very accessible and affordable uh, and popular uh, medium of art and performance. So he very clearly says that, uh, that he did not have any personal experience of uh, Jatra when he was growing up. He may have watched it here and there. He's had glimpses of it, but then that doesn't necessarily mean that his theatre, which he began to then call third theatre, uh, it's not something which uh, you know, consciously drew from these rural uh, folk forms, uh, because he still identified with his own urban upbringing and uh, the kinds of issues that haunted his, uh, his uh, urban world. So uh, let us first, uh, let's then move to uh, one of his plays that has been translated um, and uh, published uh, by uh, Siegel in uh, 2009. The plays, uh, we'll be discussing three plays by Bal Sarkar, Procession, Boma and Stale News that were published by Siegel, Calcutta in Calcutta 2009, translated by Shomik Vandupadhyay, Badal Sarkar himself and Kalyani Ghosh respectively. So to look at the first uh, play called Procession or Michil, uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very, um, it's a play that, that makes use of, uh, you know, a very a rather complex uh, stage again, which uh, is um, surrounded by the audience, right? So it's not a uh, play that has the audience as, as the fourth wall, but there are people sitting all around the uh, the uh, performance area and um, the actors uh, you know are uh, many of the actors in, who are acting in the play are anonymous they remain anonymous and uh, they're only named uh, you know one two three four five six and so on so there were six uh, anonymous characters there is another character called Koka uh, a young boy who then we later discovers also a symbol uh, symbolic character and you also have the chorus who sings uh, now and then right? and you also have an old man and uh, we also discover that Kroka and the old man are uh, interchangeable versions of each other, interchangeable characters. So if you look at the uh, stage directions of the play, uh, it says that the procession, the procession which is the name of the play is not meant to be performed on the proscenium stage. It has to be staged in an open space with the audience seated all around or on the floor of a large room. So this is uh, Sarkar's idea of Angan Manch. If performed indoors, the chairs and backless benches for the audience should be so arranged as to suggest a maze with a road going in knots and rounds. The road will constitute the acting area with the audience sitting on both sides the way people stand on both sides of a street to watch a procession passing. 
the actors will have two entrances or exits. The diagram offers a possible scheme. Right. So uh, Bal Sarkar, when he imagined, uh, when he thought of this play, he imagined Calcutta as a city of processions, which is why the play is called Procession. Uh, so you have many processions that happen in the city, whether it's a procession by the Communist Party uh, protesting against uh, fuel hikes or uh, uh, the underpaid uh, you know, workers or um, a procession of Durga Puja. Uh, it's a city of, pro of processions. So the procession itself becomes a symbol uh, that connotes many things in the play. And so you have uh, an, 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 a performance area which is surrounded by people and it's open and it's like a maze. So you have a road which, is, which goes through the uh, performance area which, is, which turns round and round in knots. And that also becomes rather symbolic uh, in the play. Now, nothing much is happening in the play by way of plot. It's not a densely plotted play. Uh, it's just an idea to uh, express the uh, play's sense of disillusionment with the urban world. So you have a boy called Koka who is missing and who then becomes a rather anonymous symbol of political corruption and loss, of estrangement and alienation in the urban world. And he also then becomes an elusive promise of social security to the socially and politically disenfranchised and marginalized. So the play itself becomes a comment on the marginality of certain sections of the population who are poor, lower caste, women, uh, children, poor children, so on and so forth, many of whom uh, you know, hope to see um, a better future with the help of the government, but the government is always an elusive entity, the state is always an elusive entity that uh, is unable to fulfill its promises. So, for example, uh, you have in the beginning a bell that rings, you have a chorus, five young men, uh, one, two, three, four and five, and a young woman, six, enter the space in the manner of the audience, disperse the space and seem to search for places to sit. The bell stops, a light goes out at once, voices from the dark. Right? So it's, it's almost like as though these characters suddenly em emerge and appear and they seem to almost take the place of the audience. You seem to sit with the audience and you can't distinguish them from the audience initially. Out in the open, the first sequence is usually dropped. The play opens with Koka entering the acting area, coming to the center, dropping dead with a scream and the chorus bursting in immediately with what's that, what's that and spreading all over the acting area. Later on, actors enact being obstructed at bends and crossings to convey the sense of an intricate maze of roads and routes crisscrossing all through. So the actors through their very bodies have to uh, uh, can give the audience a sense of the space, of how the space is an intricate maze of roads and routes that are crisscrossing all through. And so they're always, they're always looking for something, they're always trapped in that maze, looking for a way out. And the chorus is actually wondering, the six characters are wondering what happened. One, what's happened? Why do the lights go out? Two, is it a fuse? Three, load shedding, what a bother every day. Four, no, it's sabotage. Someone must have cut the wire. Five, careful, it's perfect for pickpockets and thieves. Six, can't see a thing, what will happen? And so it's almost like as though the, the, the maze, the performance area itself becomes a space for the city, for the city of Calcutta, where it's a city of processions, it's a city where there are power cuts, where there's a lot of petty uh, theft going on, uh, petty crimes are being committed. Uh, it's dark, it seems dark because of the power cuts. Then they suddenly discover, they suspect a murder has happened. They hear someone crying and they, they are, they're convinced that somebody has been murdered, but they're not sure who it is. They're looking for matchsticks or a lighter to find the body but they're not able to find anyone, right? But they're convinced that somebody has been stabbed and the body has been whisked away. But they're able to still hear screams and then they suddenly uh, hear the police arrive. The police comes and the officer asks, well, who's been killed? No one was killed because they're unable to find the cops. So this is a very elusive cops, a very elusive murder crime, right? Somebody has been murdered, but he can't seem to find the cops. Right? Then. Koka himself speaks uh, as the officer who's keeping guard walks around. The voice of Koka is heard 
faint at first but growing louder. Koka sits up as he speaks, then stands, walks, runs, tries desperately draw, to draw the attention of the officer and the audience to himself. But the officer does not notice him, even when he is right before him. Koka, I was killed. I, me, here I am. I have been killed. I, I, here, here I am. They kill me. I am dead. I was killed just now. I was killed today. I was killed yesterday. I was killed the day before yesterday. The day before the day before. Last week, last month, last year. I am killed every day. Every day, killed. Every day, dead. Every day. I will be killed tomorrow. Day after. The day after that. Next week. Next month. Next year. I. Me. Why can't you see me? Why can't you hear me? I. Here I am. I. Was killed. I am dead. I am killed every day. Every day. Every day killed. Every day dead. Every day. So you notice here that Koka is not uh, an actual person who has been killed or murdered in as much as he is a symbol of the uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, violent expulsion, the violent marginalization of certain sections of society. Right? So there are a lot of people who are there are people who are being killed every day. There are people who are being exploited every day. They are being killed in the name of religion, in the name of war, right? In the name of patriarchy, in the name of caste. Right? So you have many people who are being killed, who are being uh, symbolically or actually marginalized. Um, uh, and you know violently expelled from society so you see coca becoming an a pervasive invisible and therefore pervasive symbol of this kind of political uh, p uh, persecution and corruption so he is at once uh, present everywhere and yet he cannot be seen right so this in some sense coca becomes the very trace the elusive traces of the state itself and state persecution state violence then you also have the old man the old man who is one of the characters in the play who says um, when I was small very very small one day one morning halfway between fall and winter a lovely morning with a chill in the air and sunshine dropping with seat, dripping with sweetness I was walking along the road holding on to my father's hand I tramped along the earth road dry leaves crunching under my feet filled with the smell of decaying leaves wild flowers and slushy mud holding on to my father's hands as the ro road wound and meandered along and kept vanishing under my feet only to yield an ever new road. He begins to walk. All the roads vanish around the bend, then a new road which vanished at the bend, and a new road till it vanished again at the next bend, and a new one again, and a bend, and the vanishing road, the new, the road, the bend, vanished, new, the road. Then father said, Koka, let's go back. I said, just a little more to the next bend so I can see what's beyond the bend. Beyond the bend, the new road further said, let's go back. I said, a little further. What's beyond the bend, the new road, let's go back. A little further, the next bend, a little further, the next bend. So you look at how Bal Sarkar uses language in a very repetitive fashion until he fragments a sentence and you just have a, a repetition of the same phrase or the same word again and again to give a sense of the futility of this world right so this is there's an old man who uh, is probably an older version of Koka who remembers being Koka when he was a young boy walk taking a walk with his father and as he's walking he's also capturing the maze like structure of the performance arena and he's walking round and round in a spiraling road that seems to end nowhere right so the, the more you turn the more you keep arriving at the same bend you're not able to find the end of the road. There's no destination, right? So there's this deep sense of, of feeling entrapped and of, of feeling futile, right? So where, is the, so where is the solution? How does one get out of this structural problem of inequality, of injustice, of poverty, of death, starvation, and so on? And in the meanwhile, you have the chorus and the old man also join the chorus, uh, always looking for the Michim, looking for the true procession where is the real procession where is the procession of hope where is the procession of change then again let's pay attention to how again Sarkar uses language uh, repetitively uh, in terms of these very punctuated phrases um, so the chorus is again looking for Koka wondering where he has gone missing 
so one says lost lost name khoka age young nose snub body thin brains slightly deranged any kind person with information of any kind should please get in touch with the nearest newspaper office two missing assassination abduction a boy named khoka political stand unknown report to the nearest police station or the central missing squad if caught dead or alive or if information is available three hello customs hello border security hello interpol khoka lost khoka at large alert everybody six all india radio calcutta all india radio delhi all india radio bombay madras kanpur bangalore guwahati imphal information required about khoka's whereabouts ting tong four sos sos my maruti ss liberty and so on then one again khoka come back from wherever you are two your father and mother keep crying all the time and have taken to their beds four uh, three your brothers and sisters cry as they play play as they cry four your aunts and uncles maternal and paternal cry as they eat eat as they cry five khoka come back you'll get whatever you want six bats balls biscuits chocolates one books notebooks school college two pass fail job business three land possessions house property four house car gold jewelry five happiness peace religion salvation six wife son grandchildren great grandchildren chorus you'll get it all come back you'll get it all come back come back come back come back home your folks are shedding tears for you where for do you roam his name old man his name his parents named him khoka thousands of parents with thousands of khokas khoka means little khoka means one who hasn't grown up yet khoka means green raw immature khoka rhymes with boka dumb and dhoka betrayal right so you see again uh, uh, these uh, false promises of uh, social security and happiness and joy that uh, the poor and the disenfranchised seem to be that seem to be getting from the state but the state never actually follows up fulfills its promises and so the old man says there are many many such khokas right who are betrayed who are betrayed by the state betrayed by others they have no sense of security whatsoever uh, they are lost and they are rendered anonymous so that is i think the bal sarkar's primary experience of the city that he seems to convey in his place this deep sense of anonymity and self estrangement and alienation uh, in the city right that you you don't know who you are anymore in that vast mass of humanity which is all uh, which is divided along social and economic and political lines they're all competing for greater and greater share of the resources they're all uh, uh, you know vying for the state's at the state's attention um, they're all rendered in some sense uh, anonymous and insignificant you also notice how the actors very often uh, become different characters in the play anonymous again unnamed nameless characters they also become props because uh, bal sarkar also believed in the minimal or eliminating the the use of props in his plays and they also recreate constantly new spaces right through their bodies so the body of the actor becomes very important in bal sarkar's theater again you have a similar uh, you know statements being made by different uh, characters in the play um fresh conflict in the middle east two says three says oil crisis all over the world four another hydrogen bomb explosion in the pacific five another experiment uh, with the artificial heart one earthquake in peru uh, two cyclone in bangladesh three uprising in chile and so on and so forth right so all these different uh, voices seem to reflect the uh, different global and uh, uh, national issues that seem to affect uh, the nation um uh, from including uh, you know rise in fuel prices rise in uh, uh, you know grains and uh, oil um losses for the state transport uh, breakdown in the railways uh, the postponing of exams so it's it's it's, it's constantly uh, uh, the play is constantly punctuated with these voices that suggest the complete breakdown of the system right of uh, any kind of economic and political structure of governance there's also uh, the play also becomes a satire of um, certain institutions of uh, the family of religion of course uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of comments being made on the nature of uh, religious communalism and communal violence that divides the country uh, and then there's also a critique of 
uh, nationalism, right? I mean, the voice of nationalism and religion. Uh, there are also reflections of violence from different historical periods from the partition onwards of how the city has been divided amongst Hindus and Muslims and so on and so forth, right? Between the upper caste and the lower caste and so on. There are descriptions of, uh, uh, you know, people sharing certain uh, public forms of transport, certain public spaces like the tram or the bus. Uh, they're all bustling for, uh, they're all, uh, you know, uh, basically, um, trying to acquire space in the bus, uh, but unable to, they're jostling for space. And, uh, and in the midst of all this chaos, this complete utter chaos in the city, every character is trying to find the real, the true procession. They're looking for the real Mitchell. Where is the real Mitchell? Then there are again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, uh, certain uh, cries of uh, that uh, reproduce the violence, the riots between Hindus and Muslims, um, or the struggle against for freedom against uh, the British colonial uh, system. Um, so there are shouts of Vande Mataram, and then uh, there is uh, two says uh, characters two says remember at the moment of your birth your life has been offered in sacrifice to the great mother. Three glory to the generous British government. Chorus God save our noble king. Long live our gracious king. God save the king. Five death to the British dogs. Four, death to the terrorists. Freedom, two, non-violence. Three, non-cooperation. Four, satyagraha. Five, charkha. So these are all uh, you know, lines, words that uh, bring back our memory of Gandhi's non-cooperation movement. One, Hindus and Muslims unite. Two, quit India. Three, do or die. Four, karenge ya marenge. Five, British imperialists leave India. Then one, ladke lenge, Pakistan. We'll win Pakistan by force. One part of chorus, Allahu Akbar. Other part of the chorus, Vande Mataram. Chorus, thrash the bastards, thrash them, thrash the bastards. Chorus, oh sir, please, which way to the refugee camp? One, ye azadi jhuti hai, jhuta hai. This freedom is a phony freedom. Chorus, bhulo mat, bhulo mat, never forget, never forget. Right? So these are all cries that are, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, capture those uh, days of uh, communal violence in the wake of partition and uh, the, uh, the uh, hollowness of, of freedom, right? So what does freedom mean to the people who, are, uh, do, not, who do not belong to the nation? Those who are uh, on the fringes and the margins of the nation, right? So the, the, the elitism of nationalism, which includes only some and excludes the other, uh, is only a, uh, a phony kind of a freedom, right? So the freedom, the independence, which is one for a nation to be, which does not include everyone, which is built and based on exclusions, is a phony freedom. So the, the play, of course, is a satire that exposes the hollowness of uh, nationalism and patriotism. Remember, the master says, remember our national heritage. Remember the, num the, new, the numberless martyrs in our struggle for freedom. Remember the revolutionary heroes of our fiery days. Remember, India is the country of Manu, Parashar, Kalidas, Bhavabhuti, Sita, Savitri, Sri Chaitanya and Gandhiji. Remember the invincible strength, the principle of non-violence. Remember that it is our responsibility to give spiritual leadership to the world. Remember the greatness of democracy in India. Remember the fundamental rights of the constitution. Remember the green revolution, the nationalization of banks, family planning, dollar aid, the nuclear blast, MISA arrest and so on. So uh, in, the, in the wake of all these memories right, that, that you, have to, you have to remember your heritage, of tolerance of democracy, but that is in stark contrast to the reality of post-independence India, where this is a deep sense of disillusionment with uh, the country, right, with the nation, where uh, uh, freedom is saffron, revolution is green, the pocket is red, the market is black, right? Um, then the chorus says, glory be to Lord Krishna, avatar of the markets, we bow at the feet of Lord Black Market. Hail to the black god. The black god will save us all. Vote for Mr. Blackie Marketwala. Vote for Mr. Blackie Marketwala. Right? So, Sarkar is obviously uh, parodying, ridiculing, uh, satirizing the, the black market, the, the, the kind of the uh, vast uh, uh, sense of corruption that, uh, uh, that uh, is the state of the post-independent uh, country. So there are all the basic commodities are not affordable to the to a majority of the population. Coal, bran, kerosene, baby food, textbooks, rice, dal, oil, sugar, flour, and so on. 
there are also voices of of uh, of of the poor where uh, there are people who are uh, fighting for food who are begging for food so there's a deep sense of uh, of um, deprivation and poverty then there is also a sense of uh, there's also satire of human civilization right so he says so uh, for example uh, two said uh, two says all men were equal at the beginning of creation but they were uncivilized three says all day long they worked yet there was never enough to eat so they were equal four then men learned to use animals learned how to farm then they had surplus five surplus brought civilization man became civilized civilization civilized man civilized society one who would join the surplus everyone who would enjoy the surplus everyone no only those with virtue with intelligence with strength so only those who have power those who have access to education and wealth they are the ones who actually enjoy the surplus of civilization so civilization itself is built on uh, discrimination on violence and on depriving some people of freedom they are the ones who work for uh, the rest who are their masters right so uh, there's a very clear uh, unequal access to resources right so the progress of science the progress of, of civilization is built on uh, inequality and hierarchy on a divide between the haves and the have nots between the intellectuals the aesthetes the ones who are uh, you know uh, who believe they the intellectuals and those who are uh, the working class the, the the ones who labor the ones who are exploited and what is the greatest enemy of civilization it's communism and who protects preserves and uphold civilization you the master chorus cries so the master of course can be anything because the master could be capitalism in this case it could be imperialism and they are the ones who keep us civilized it's this, it's a civilizing force right while communism is it believes in the co- in 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 uh, in common shared access of uh, sh- shared access of resources and not private property and so that becomes the uh, the other uh, battle between communism and capitalism which is now being reflected uh, and again there are again further voices of uh you know uh the the struggles the strife that farmers have to face in terms of unseasonal rain in terms of of mounting debt the fact that the state will not redeem their debts and they have to suffer uh with um, uh, debt ridden uh, being debt, being uh, i mean unable to redeem their debts many of them have uh, been given adulterated cooking oil which uh, leads to the food poisoning of the entire family so there are many fam- farmers and their families and the poor who are, the urban poor who are, who are dying because of their uh, inability to access uh, good uh, pure uh, resources uh, there are uh, there is a lot of police corruption a lot of police violence uh, you know who are police who are you know persecuting innocent people innocent poor uh simply because they pure poor they exploit them and they beat them up and so on and so forth right so they're constantly in search of coca and they're unable to find where coca is right and they 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 they're all climbing the old man is climbing along with the rest up the spiral road and they're unable, unable to find coca and uh, it's only towards the end of the play that we have a sense which that it actually ends in a sense of hope now there is no uh, solution to these problems as such there's no uh, vision of what of how these problems can be redeemed how humanity can be redeemed how these problems can be resolved is not something which is clearly spelled out right so there are many other problems which are being listed as we go along the play uh, uh especially for example uh, people who are killed for uh, you know marrying outside their caste uh there are uh, uh, there's violence against rickshaw walas for example who uh, some claim are becoming uh, arrogant they're putting on airs so then there is another f- uh, fourth voice which is complaining that uh, that the whole world has turned atheist that you know, only in our country uh, only our country has some religion but even that is going out right so the fact that there are some who are being persecuted for their complete utter lack of faith in god or worship of any kind and um, so in some sense the missing boy coca uh, is uh, becomes a symbol of all this right of uh, this deep sense of uh, of alienation of estrangement of violence of intolerance of uh, ca- different kinds of violence communal violence sexual violence uh, you know caste violence class violence um so he says khoka says towards the end of the play that um, 
stop it, stop these lies, it's not the truth. How can you tolerate it? Don't you see? This is all rubbish, deceit, an attempt to confuse you. I have been killed. I am killed every day. I will be killed every day. That's the truth. In the dark of the night, in the din of day, every day, you're trying to cover up that truth, but you cannot. I won't let you cover it up. You, all of you, don't let them cover it up. So there's always this fear that there are some people, especially how the way in which the state and those who are in power tend to bribe uh, the poor, the disenfranchised, the disadvantaged with promises, right? That uh, they will somehow uh, uh, be redeemed, they'll, they'll, they'll somehow be freed of all their problems if they decide to vote for those who are in power, right? So there's this deep sense of um, uh, this, the ways in which art and culture are being used as uh, ideological mechanisms to uh, delude the people, right? to uh, you know, deceive them, um, uh, to uh, play a game in which the lower classes, the women, those who are disadvantaged are kept in their position of servitude and subordination. Right? So Koka is that voice that wants to make uh, everyone wary. He's the voice of the uh, disenfranchised, of the poor, the marginalized, uh, that wants to be wary of all these games, these power games that those who are in power play uh, in order to deceive them. And so all these characters in some sense are lost in these many several processions in the city, these processions that seem to be uh, stand, that seem to stand and represent different causes, but then uh, all in the name of power and corruption. But then there is, where is the true procession, right? Which is the real procession, which is a procession of hope, which is an inclusive procession that includes all those who have been left behind earlier, right? So Koka represents the elusive truth, the hollow name of injustice and ethics, he is the voice of hunger, of starvation, of disease, poverty, and death. And the old man and, the, and Koka are also versions of each, each other, which suggests that nothing much has changed over the generations, right? That, that the country is still plagued with all these and haunted with all these problems. And so there has to be some uh, way in which we can form a procession, right? Which is a note of hope. It's a procession of hope, which is able to expose the ideological uh, mechanisms, the ideological means through which those who are in power, the elite, those who use art and culture as a medium of, uh, of deceit uh, can be exposed right, for what they are. Right? So can be exposed for their corruption, for uh, their uh, power hunger. Right? So, so this, this performance really, I mean this, this play really is suggestive of that very uh, thing where uh, the play becomes in, in many ways a statement and a satire on various problems that plague the country, various economic and social problems of seasonal, uh, seasonal employment, unemployment, the debt ridden uncertain lives of farmers and peasants, the unavailability of jobs uh, uh, despite qualifications, despite being qualified. Uh, all this is being represented through the voice of Koka. Uh, who also symbolizes the loss of self, right? In, in the midst of all these problems, there's a loss of, this, of a sense of self. Everyone becomes anonymous. Everyone uh, suffers a deep sense of estrangement and alienation uh, that comes from exploitation and the forces of capitalism. And so the only way in which one can perhaps uh, arrive at a sense of hope is to have a new procession, a new procession which symbolically includes everyone that uh, entails the joining of forces between those who are victimized, those who are disenfranchised, the powerless. And uh, in an attempt to try and self-consciously expose uh, the uh, self-deceptive mechanisms of capitalism, of patriarchy, uh, of, uh, of urban uh, politics, right, and so on and so forth. So that ends our very brief discussion of uh, Bal Sarkar's first play, uh, Procession or Michil. Thank you.